Enjoying the view from there? No, I was talking to my guitar. Oh, I'm so sorry. You, you play beautifully, though. You can take your money out. I'm not panhandling. Oh, oh, oh my gosh. I'm so, I, didn't, I didn't mean to seem like... It's fine. Why do people always assume that they know someone from the first time they lay eyes on them. Well, I wouldn't say offering a small tip for your talents is any sort of assumption. <laughs> it, it, it was a gesture. It, I, I didn't assume that. But you did. I, I do it too. We all do. My question is why? Some big wig scientist says our, our brain is naturally hardwired or or that monkeys and fish do the same thing. I don't know if I buy that. Why is it scientifically impossible for two people to enter into a conversation without giving each other some shitty, stereotypical identity? It's not impossible. Yeah, it is. No, nothing's impossible. You just have to look at it more. So you walked over here, threw your money at me, I did not carefully, throw money. deliberately willed your money into my space, completely neutral, like I was some Emotionless robot. Now, like, even that's making an assumption. So you're a scientist, huh? Or just a failed philosophy major certain your adept awareness of society is indeed a science. Yep, I'm the reincarnation of Plato. <laughs> well, I don't think it's any sort of programmed response. I, it's like sitting in this cafe right now, okay? There was a time when we didn't know why we stayed on the ground. And it was crazy enough to discover gravity. And it's our natural response when we meet somebody new that we don't know. It's, we have to you know, think something of them. It's a hypothesis, which can change when you get to know somebody. Really? So, so what's your hypothesis about me? Well... I'm torn between raving lunatic, who thinks he's a fucking incarnation of an ancient Greek philosopher, and some genius billionaire type looking to find himself in a coffee shop. Yep, you guessed it. And yours? My what? A hypothesis? Yeah. I don't know, I'm still thinking about it. not soul searching. Who says I'm not sitting here hoping for self-discovery? So you are searching for yourself. Uh, not necessarily. I mean, isn't everybody looking for themselves for an extent? I mean, nobody completely knows who they are, right? Maybe. I'm perfectly content with the person I see in the mirror every morning and, you know, I feel like that sense of mystery gives you a reason to live, doesn't it? I don't know. Why do we need a reason to live? Why can't we just live? I've had my fucking reason to live laid out for me ever since I was little. I become a successful musician. And where has that gotten me? Homeless. Aside from this temporary abode, longing for direction. L life, life is just a shithole waiting for each loser to fall in. I don't know, maybe I, maybe I shouldn't expect 
any future. Maybe I should just be. Glad you have life figured out to such a innovative and totally specific plan. Look, I, I don't want to talk about yes, it. Yes, you do. No, I don't. How did you get here? What do you mean? By you, know what, you know what I mean. I could ask you the same question. Well, I'm across the street at the park every Saturday for the farmer's market. Buying or selling? Admiring. I'm a people watcher, and when you go to those types of things, you see two types, right? There's the hardworking, you know, kind of sweaty, organic farmer who's sitting underneath some shade, you know, in a beat-up old lawn chair. And then there's the earth-loving community shopper frequenting the marketplace. You make it sound so picturesque. No, but it really is. I mean, people look towards city skyscrapers or national parks to find beauty and then, you know, look at a farmer's market and see it as some mecca for hipsters, but it's an earnest passion beneath the facade that makes it so much more beautiful than any skyscraper or national monument. So where exactly is this mecca for hipsters? The other side of the park. Yeah, we all just sit there in our skinny jeans, drinking kombucha, listening to obscure alternative music, and bitching about everything mainstream. I hate the trace of sarcasm. There's your adept societal awareness again. So, I spill my deepest, darkest secret. It's time you fess up. I play music here whenever I can. That's all you need to know. So what is a what is admiring a, a farmer's market entail? Well, uh, I help the um, merchants set up their stands and uh, walk around with the manager, make sure everyone's comfortable, and kind of just you know hang out, go back to my booth. So you're a farmer. No, no, you see, well, it's kind of hard to explain. Um, when I have the time, it's... Well, it looks like I need to get back anyway, so... It was really nice to meet you. I'm here all week. You again. Hey. Did you just wake up? <sighs> yeah. I see. So a lack of sleep is the answer to quelling those philosophical rants. Sure, let's let's call it that. So are we just supposed to guess each other's names? I know not how to tell thee who I am. Romeo and Juliet. Come on, you've got to have read Romeo and Juliet. Should we? Should we what? Know each other's names? I don't know. Does it know what people do when they meet? What's in a name? That which we call a rose by any other name would smell as sweet? I believe that's another line from Shakespeare's uplifting take on romantic suicide. Fair enough. Well, uh, I guess I'll just head back, but... Wait. What are you listening to? Oh, it's uh, the Dark Irises. Are you familiar uh, with... Yeah, yeah, I'm familiar with them, but that's not important. I mean, like... Why are you listening to them right now? Why do you listen to music w while you jog? Um, well, I guess it's to keep me focused or take my mind someplace else. I don't know. No, you, you do know. You just don't know. 
Okay. I'm not sure I follow. What I mean is, you do it because everyone else does it. <laughs> I see. Never been accused of doing something because everybody else does it. Thought I was supposed to be hipster. No, it's not like that. It, it's like chemically speaking, you know? Biologically founded. You listen to music while you run because others do it, and, and nobody really questions it. It's like how everybody asks for your name when they meet. We do it... We do it because we're programmed to do it. We've done it for so long, it's just become a thing. So? Is that a bad thing? No. Not necessarily, but... I mean, when someone does something different, even if it's natural, we can't accept it. You want to know my name because... Doing something different feels wrong. I see. Well, I see what you're saying. It's like we do what our parents and their parents and their parents and so on tell them to do. And you know, we see a movie or read a book and just try to fit in. Yeah, exactly. Well, hold on. I agree that we all have the right to not conform, but on another level, if everybody did what they wanted to do whenever they wanted to do it, I mean, this world would be hell on earth, you know? There needs to be some order. The world would just fall into chaos? If we let it, yes. I wouldn't say I agree. Well, it's like this. When I was little, I always wanted to be just like Daddy, right? I'd watch the news and complain about those damn liberals who believed in global warming. I'd follow him around when he mowed the lawn, and I'd always want to go to the sports games. And every time he would remind me that this is no way to act for a girl. And I was furious, you know? I thought I could be anyone I damn well pleased and no one was going to stop me. So one night, I figured if he was drinking that brownish stuff, then I could too. It always seemed to make him a lot happier, and I wanted some of that happiness. But. When I asked for some, he said no, of course. But I decided to sneak some anyway. I passed out rum bottle in hand. And my parents found me on the floor. The glass bottle shattered around me. They rushed me to the hospital, pumped my stomach, put 15 stitches where some glass had shattered and penetrated my hand. Sometimes it's just best to trust society. And then I like to think that there's a greater something guiding us when we're in need. I guess that's why I have my guitar. Huh? I don't know. For a few short moments when I'm playing, it's like allowing myself to float a few feet in the air. Is that why you play then? <clears throat> sort of a reprieve from real life? I, you could say that. I guess it just reminds me that sometimes it's not all bad, you know? Can't even imagine living in the streets. You have no idea. No, I, I don't. Look, I mean, we've got nothing to lose. I'm just some stranger off the street, right? Why do you care so much? I've shared so much about my life. You've returned the favor. Sorry, I, I don't think I have it in me. Well, that is just too bad because I am going to stay on this precious bench of yours until you feel like you are. No, you won't. Sooner or later, you'll have somewhere to be. I guess we'll find out then. I play at the cafe across the street whenever I can. Manager lets me in, lets me play for food. Other than that, I call a park bench my home for the evenings. 
It's safe enough in the daytime. But at night... At night, I, I can't escape reality. But I still live to see each day. Why, if you don't mind me asking, are you homeless? I mean, you're what, 17, 18? 19. 19. What about you know, your home? What about your parents? Or don't you have any family? I do mind. It was a choice. That's all. You chose to be homeless? I chose to follow my heart. Homelessness... Homelessness is just society's way of saying a big fuck you to everyone who aspires for something. It's like we're living in one of Orwell's fucking fantasies. I've lived my whole entire life trying to find that reason to live. Only to find that everyone I know is waiting around a corner to remind me that I'm a failure. That everything I am, everything I believe in, has no value. Well, I mean, look, some people are just assholes who have nothing better to do but put you down. But you just have to realize that it's not up to them to figure out what you want to do with your life. I mean, you can't give them that power. How do you cope with it, then? How do you cope with reality? I paint. Well, I don't consider myself an expert, mind you, but, you know, when I have those few minutes to, or hours, hopefully, put my, you know, brush to that blank canvas, I just feel like I'm releasing all of my love and fear and just sort of drifts away. What? Follow me. What now? There's, there's nothing. <laughs> it's, it's just my favorite painter is Soro, and I feel like the two of you would relate. Me and the painter? What's so funny about that? I don't know. I, just, I feel like I always had a lot in common with him. Well, I tried to have a lot in common with him. He was a genius. So you think I'm a genius? <laughs> You'd be so lucky. You couldn't even name one of his paintings. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> you've probably seen the uh, Sunday afternoon, which is the one where the people are in the park and they're all standing or sitting in their long dresses with the under umbrellas. They were just kind of standing there observing. It's both beautiful and sad. Sad? They just seem so confined. You know, it's a beautiful day, and I don't know how they're not stripping off their clothes and jumping in the lake. But they're content to just stand in the shadows and look on as if it's nothing. But anyway, Soro was obsessed with scientific discovery and color theory, and he used those to incorporate into his art. He believed that painters could use color to create harmony and emotion the same way that Musicians use harmony to create music. Here. Look directly into my eyes, okay? Now close them. What? Close them! <laughs> Do you still see me? It's like a white flash of light or in the shape of my eyes or maybe even my whole face, but it's there, right? I call it Soro's halo. Soro wrote about this halo effect, how the colors you see when your eyes are closed are like a negative or opposite what you saw when your eyes were open. It's like, for that split second, 
you're capturing the brightness of the other person and you can't help but feel something from it. Here, let me see if I can try to find it. Well, nope. Head. Nope. His pointillism is utterly fascinating though. I've always liked to imagine that each and every dot of color has its own story, its own personality. Then each of his paintings is bursting with a thousand emotions. Here it is though. Okay, you can open your eyes. Sometimes I find myself in a moment like this one and I think about seeing it in a painting, you know, but I mean, a moment doesn't truly exist unless it's in real time, but you know, if it's in a painting, it captures a fragment of that moment and allows it to exist into infinity. These people seem confined, but there's a longing in their eyes. It's as if there's something in the distance, not too far away, but still unreachable, and they don't know what to do. They've known their same shitty routine life and nothing else, but they want more. All they need to do is, is swim across that pond and join the others. The painting is a response to another work of his called Bathers at Asnias. In that piece, the bathers are in the sun and on the other side of the lake, but they're completely free. Where did you come from? The other side of the lake. Uh, well, aren't you a poet? <laughs> A songwriter, maybe, but mm. not a poet. Oh, I forgot you wrote music, huh? That's right. You're gonna write a song about this very moment, won't you? How you're madly in love with me, but I'm the devil incarnate because I won't let you get in my pants? I would, but uh, I'm afraid you wouldn't have a chance with me. Hey! <laughs> yeah. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't peg you for a day in the park kind of guy. Well, <laughs> when you live in one, you pick up a thing or two. Hmm. <sighs> what? I have to head out soon. Stay here with me. I know where to find you.
What's the matter? Nothing, nothing, I'm fine. You know, every now and then I, I think to myself that, uh, that I might be getting tired of this place. You know, living in one place for a long time can get, I don't know, kind of boring. But something new always comes around the corner and I realize that this is where I'm meant to be. Yeah, yeah, I, I guess so. What's that supposed to mean? Nothing. Are you are you mad with me living in the park? <laughs> of course not. Where is that coming from? Come on, come on. We'll just let's keep going. You know you can talk to me about anything, right? Of course I do. You're making a bigger deal out of this than you need to. About what? Hmm? You said I'm making a bigger deal about this. What exactly am I making a big deal about? I knew it. I tried to convince myself otherwise. I'm not good enough for of you. Of course not. That's ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, I'm not. You know, it's really funny. After spending over three months every day with the same person, you really get to know them. I know you. I wish you did. Really, really, I do. I just don't know how, how far, how, how long this can go. So the truth comes out. You just don't seem to be changing. Change. Changing? We just live, you want me to live change? Such different lives and you want me to like, fucking change? No, no, of course I will. Yes, but where is this so coming from? I thought you were different. I am different. Where is this, this is fucking so coming from then? We have never been together. Not once in this past three months. Sure, yeah, there are, there are moments. But you just haven't come to terms with this world. But there was, there was a time when we were inseparable. When you smiled and I'd smiled back. When the world was yours. And you had life. And you knew, you knew how to love. I have done everything in my power to bring you back. But the rest is up to you. How could you do this to me? How could you do this to me?
I'm sorry, do we know each other? I'd like to think so. Oh, I see. I'm sorry, I'm not really interested. You still paint. What is this piece? That I painted a year ago. It's supposed to be a portrait of a boy, or not really the boy himself, but... But more like what I see when I close my eyes. Is something wrong? But I've never actually seen you. Just a reflection of you, of sorts. But, but when I close my eyes. You know when you stare at something for a really long time and then you close your eyes and you see like a partial image? Well, I call that... Soros Halo. How do you know that? You told me. How do you, what are you talking You told me when we were together. Together? We did everything together. What did you say your name was again? I didn't say. Look, how am I supposed to know who you are if I don't know your name? My name? What's in a name? We're so much more than a name. <laughs> 